Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today's video, which is the first of my Inktober 2019 videos. In this one, I'm going to catch you up on the paintings I completed for days 1, 2 and 3 using the daily prompts from the official Inktober list and talk about how they inspired me to paint what I did with the animals and nature theme I've chosen this year. I'll also be doing my painting for today, day 4, where you'll be able to see my inking process from start to finish, so I hope you enjoy the video. Before I start though, if you want to know more about Inktober and see what I painted for the last two years, then I did post a video last week with all of that in it, so be sure to check out the link at the end of this video if you haven't seen it and want to catch up. All the materials you've seen by the way will be listed in the description box below. So let's get on with what I painted for Inktober Day 1. The word prompt for that day was ring, and I immediately thought of a ring-tailed lemur. I have painted a lemur before on this channel but only painted the face, so in this one I wanted to include that lovely fluffy tail. As I mentioned in last week's video, I've decided to do my paintings in monochrome this year, and I'm using Dr. PH Martin's Bombay India ink in the colour turquoise. I also used a dip pen to get in the really tiny details of the lemur's eyes and nose. To get the contrast I wanted for this one, I had to build up several layers on the darkest area of that ring tail and painted a lighter, looser background to help the lemur stand out. On day two, the word prompt was mindless, and this one was a bit tricky, so I was glad I'd brainstormed my ideas before Inktober began. In the end, I came up with a panda, because as gorgeous as they are, they aren't always the most careful of animals. When I was doing my research for this one, I learned that female pandas sometimes after giving birth have sat on and squashed their babies, which I thought was a bit mindless, so that's what made me paint one for this prompt. Maybe that's unfair and I don't like to think of any animals as being mindless, but I enjoyed the painting anyway. For this one, I again used the dip pen to get in the small details around the eyes and then had fun dropping in concentrated ink onto wet paper for the darkest area of the panda's fur. As with the lemur, I needed to apply several layers of ink to get the depth of colour I wanted for the darkest part of the panda's fur, and made sure to let the painting dry between each layer. To add some fur texture, I used a round size zero brush to add short strokes around the panda's face. For the background, I switched over to using a Derwent water brush with a chisel nib and painted in some simple bamboo, painting onto dry paper which I think worked out quite well. Finally, I went back in with a round water brush and added a few darker details to the panda's chest. Using the water brush with its fine point and constant flow of water made this process a lot of fun and meant I could easily switch between the wet on wet and the wet on dry techniques very quickly to achieve the effects I was after, and I was quite pleased with how it turned out. The word prompt for day 3 was bait, and again nothing immediately sprang to mind, but after a bit more research I came up with a heron. Herons have a unique way of catching fish to eat by using bait, and this bait can be live, like flies, ants or dragonflies for example, but they also use other tools as well, like twigs or feathers. These they drop into the water to lure in bigger fish to feed on, pretty clever I thought. So I drew out my heron and began by marking in the facial features with my dip pen and neat ink before painting the darkest features on the heron's head, using a small round paintbrush and a much more diluted concentration of ink for the beak and neck. I painted on dry paper for these smaller detailed areas as I wanted the control and precision that this wet on dry technique allows. For the background though, I used the wet in wet technique as I wanted this to be looser and less detailed to make the heron stand out. I used a mid-tone blue here to contrast against the lighter feathers and beak, and dropped in more concentrated ink in places where I wanted to add in some foliage. 
I vary the concentration of the ink to build up the layers of leaves and grasses and whilst I think it looked okay, I couldn't help thinking it was missing something. In last week's video, I experimented with adding in some of my sepia fineliner to some of the leaves in that painting. So I thought I'd try the same technique to bring a bit of life and interest into this one too. And rather than go in with dark harsh lines, I use my stippling or dotting technique again. I'm not sure it worked though, but I like how the heron turned out. One thing I have learned though through taking on this challenge in the past is that you won't create 31 masterpieces over the course of the month and some paintings you'll like less than others. But there's no time for regrets or redos, so it's on to the next one. Before I show you today's painting though, I just wanted to mention that I've just put the first four original paintings from last Inktober up for sale in my Etsy shop Art Hive by Sarah, and I'll put a link to that in the description box if you fancy being the owner of one of these original 8x10 inch ink paintings. I'll be adding the rest of last year's paintings to my shop as we go through the month as well, so keep an eye out if there's one that particularly caught your eye. Okay, let's get on with today's painting and the word prompt for day 4 is freeze. Now despite the feeling that I ought to paint some frost covered leaves or twigs after having expanded my theme to include nature as well as animals, I just couldn't turn down the opportunity to paint a polar bear. So for this one I'll be painting this mum and baby polar bear on the ice. I started off with my dip pen and used it to mark in the tiny features on the polar bear's faces. I used neat ink straight out of the bottle here so it was really concentrated and dark. The size of the watercolour paper I'm using for Inktober this year is pretty small at about 8 by 10 centimetres and whilst this has really helped me to complete these paintings in a reasonable amount of time so far, it does mean that getting the details in in the animals faces is quite tricky. Once that was done though, I went on to painting the first layer to the polar bear's coats. I used the wet on wet technique again and my water brush to apply a dilute mix of my turquoise ink. Whilst the paper was still wet, I then added more concentrated ink to the darker areas under the polar bear's body and neck. Next I moved on to the area of water in the background again using the wet and wet technique to ensure I didn't get any hard edges. For the ice behind the polar bears, I wanted to add in some darker values to give the painting a bit more depth, so I applied more concentrated ink here. foreground I used the same wet and wet technique as before and started to think about where I was going to put my lightest lights and my darkest darks in this painting to make it pop since both the bears and the ice are quite light in colour. So far as composition was concerned I did use a reference photo to help with the shape and anatomy of the two bears but the background I adapted to fit what I was going for which is something I'm looking to do more over the course of this month long challenge. So with the background drying, I moved my attention back to the polar bears and added more concentrated ink to the folds and creases. For this I used a fine tip water brush to add in the darker ink, which meant I could easily soften any edges I didn't want just by using clean water from the brush. I decided to make the area of ice behind the bears one of my darkest values to contrast well with the lightest value on the polar bears themselves, and once I'd done that it was easier to paint the midtones in between. One thing I had forgotten from last year though was just how much lighter ink can dry, so it did take me a few layers to build up those darker values. Ink does dry quite quickly though, and with the smaller size of my paintings this year, adding several layers wasn't as time consuming as it could have been. 
I also think that painting on a smaller scale takes the pressure off a bit and gives you maybe more freedom to experiment without feeling like you're risking ruining large sheets of what might be expensive paper. To complete this painting I decided to go back to my sepia fineliner to add a bit of texture so I used the dotting technique again to apply the ink into the darker shadow areas on the ice. This I think really helped to push the contrast and I quite like how it turned out. But I'd love to know what you think so let me know which is your favourite so far and if you're taking part in Inktober yourself I'd also love to know how you're getting on. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe and if you can't wait until next Friday to see what I paint over the coming week be sure to follow me on Instagram at Sarah Newbury Art, where I'll be posting every day throughout the month. Thank you all so much for watching, have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.